Hey everybody, Shark here. Got another 1v1 for you today, this time on the map Villa Fiore. Got a couple requests for DAC play against Brit, so that's what we're going to see. As the DAC, you have a Zillagath from France, ranked number 43. And as the Brits, you have De Pope uh, from Germany, ranked number 89. So really high quality play here. And what we're going to talk about after the game is the general approach and how DAC can manage kind of the late game power of the British faction. That's it. On to the match. Okay. So we got Azilagath here on the west side of the map, Villafiore in blue with the DAC, immediately locking in Italian combined arms and Bersalieri, right? Getting his first Bursa squad out, and then the crowd shoots him. And then opposite him in red here, we have De Pope, uh, getting a second sap route and getting a section command post going. So we'll see where these guys go. It's interesting. I looked at a couple of different replays uh, for DAC versus Brits, and at the high level, I mean, it almost seems like Bursas are a requirement. So we'll see how they play this one out uh, and how Azilagath works this here to see if he can counter uh, Brits in the current state. So here the crotch shits and cop comes out. And it looks like he's going for some maybe aggressive capping here. Pushing all the way to the VP. Meanwhile, the Pope getting a dingo out. Which is a decent counter to the Krod Shitson because it can't reverse, right? So if you can catch it and pin it, you can kill it pretty quickly. Okay, this is this is the initial strategy, is to try to get this triple cap on using the speed of the Bursalieri, the Panzer Pioneers, focus less on resources, and try to put that pressure on your opponent. So now the Krod Shitson's going to back cap, and we'll have the first engagement here, the Dingo, dealing with the Bursalieri squad. Another Bursa squad out. And so, in the latest patch, the Dingo uh, gets an accuracy decrease on the move, which basically prevents it from being able to run down infantry as effectively. So, really important, and you see DePope using that, keeping the, uh, the Dingo in close as much as possible to do damage. Now we see an infantry section coming out uh, for DePope. And Sapper's right here to repair the Dingo, so... Uh, a little bit of manpower bleed inflicted on these bursas. And while Zillagath's just going to use... is Now he's back capping, right? He's still got the triple cap on. And so I think by the time... The Pope is actually able to, to undo some of this, he's going to be basically 100 VPs down. So it's a... It's an interesting strategy. You know, one geared less towards combat and more towards the actual victory condition. Oh, Panzer Pioneers realize they're pinched by the Dingo and immediately retreat. Now the Crod Shoots in going to harass these uh, sappers here. Yeah, Crod Shoots in needs to be careful. Doesn't want to get caught. So, Zilgath going to go with a third squad of Bursas as he texts the Light Support Company. Meanwhile, DePope floating some resources here. He's going to get a second infantry section out, which they'll definitely scale well against the Bursas over time. Oh, the Dingo's going to ignore the Bursas here and try to chase this crowd shits in, taking a bunch of damage and good catch. So Depot knocked out uh, the crowd shits in. With three Bursa squads on the field, Azilagath not going to struggle for map presence, especially with the passive sprint. And De Pope has finally flipped the uh, the VP balance in his favor. So he's going to start chipping away at Azilagath's lead here. Dingo doing a lot of bleed, and this is why having the two sappers, it's going to be right back at full health here. Now, versus basically shooting at this infantry section through the wall, right? So with no windows, the section can't shoot back, but the versus can do some damage. Now the second infantry section shows up. First is going to get in close. Now the Dingo on the flank here. And this is the downside to the Bursas, right? Until they get their command point upgrades, uh, they don't do as much damage, especially to vehicles, uh, and at long range. And then uh, they obviously don't have a snare. Pioneers force off Sappers. Now, Azilagath going for an MG-34. Oh, they go for the boy's AT rifle in the first infantry section. 
The Pope has gotten a third out now. Still no choice on battle group. Sapper's on the flank. Now with a flamethrower. And so DePope taking really good control of the center of the map here. These sappers are going to push up. MG34 shows up just in time. But these sappers may be able to decap this VP and this cutoff before they get pinned. Oh, nope. Pinned in two bursts. So good to know for the future. Light, uh, fire support elements being teched for Azilla Gath. I'm not sure if I said that already. Meanwhile, DePope's countering with the grenade package. He's clearly worried about vehicles coming out between the boys uh, and the grenade. Okay. Now, two bursts of squads coming out. Azilla Gath really in dire need of some healing. Uh, Dingo's already at vet too. Now versus nice height advantage here. They're gonna get a two on one, and the MG34 comes up to assist. But because they're at low health, they're actually in danger of getting knocked down here. And now more infantry sections coming up on the flank. Right, flanking the machine gun outside the arc. One burst of squad force to retreat, and here comes a rifle grenade onto the MG34. Does a ton of chunk health damage, but doesn't knock it out. So the sections will win that engagement. On the flank versus... Oh, is it sappers? They find a mine? Must have. For the dingo able to force away the bursts. And now Azilagath going to use the flak for Ling. Meanwhile, the Pope is attacking his platoon command post. So Azilagath going to need to start thinking about AT here with the chance for a Humber or Stewart to get on the field within a couple of minutes. The Pope has good fuel control, has got the triple cap. Zilligath now down to 300 VPs. So the early rush with the Bursas uh, helped a little bit, but now he is fully on the back foot here. The Brit infantry just outscaling and outperforming the Bursas head on. Good use of the Dingo to kind of continue to put pressure without bleeding a ton of manpower. Oh, MG34 retreats, but it's going to... Oh, drops three models to the rifle grenade. Yeah, he's really feeling the lack of healing, but here comes the flak for Ling. One section forced off. Dingo forced to back up before it gets kind of beaten up. Bursas and Panzer Pioneers leading the charge to prevent the boys' AT rifles from doing damage to this flak for Ling. Sappers are in support, but the flak for Ling is going to counter this fairly well. On the flank, we have a Bursley area squad challenging infantry section by the VP. So, Azilagath able to reduce some of the VP pressure here. And he's going to go for the center VP, which is supported by the Dingo and the boys AT section. Here comes a flak flying on the flank. First couple shots with. He really needs the suppression. Yeah, and then infantry section forced away. Now, Azilagath, interestingly enough, he's teching the right side of the tree, right? So, let's see here. So he hasn't done any of this. So the fact that he's going on the Italian armor side, I think is really interesting. Maybe he's going for early Karos. All right, and so he's identified the risk uh, at this point of the brisket and vehicle out. So you're going to see the Panzer Jaeger mechanized group. And DePope teching Stewart's now. Ooh. Six pounder gets one shot off. Black Furling immediately backs up. He's gonna need repairs. Panzer Jaeger half tracked. Not enough to really run down a Stewart. But enough to force it away. <clears throat> yeah, Black Furling fires a burst, suppresses his infantry, then backs up a little bit. He's he's definitely worried about the six pounder getting another shot off. Here comes Sappers on the flank of the machine gun. Three squads of bursts is plinking away at them at range. And now the flak furling changes its focus. Oh, Panzer Jaegers. They could get a couple of shots off. Oh, flak furling really burns down that dingo. If the flak, if the Panzer Jaegers had gotten a shot off, uh, that would have been it for the Vet 2 dingo. Now bursts 
pushing through the south side of the map here, challenging these boys' AT rifles. And based on the veterans here, I don't think we've seen the infantry training yet, but that is something uh, maybe DePope could consider doing after he gets this steward out. He's got enough fuel. Meanwhile, Azilic Ath has unlocked the Carol Armados. So maybe that's his answer here. Well, there we go. As I say it. Two bursts. Oh, here comes the flak wing. Yep. Infantry section retreats. These two sappers here are also at risk. Six pounder pushing up. So we'll see kind of how he sets up this engagement. The Karo's on the flank though. And if I am to Pope, I'm not expecting a Karo or a tank to hit this early based on the tier two build. It's a possibility with this battle group, but most players focus on getting the extra man or the Breda machine guns available to support their bursas. Oh, well. Ironically, the six-pounder doesn't see it. First shot comes in on the flak filling. It's going to back up. Now Stewart here on Aziligat's flank. Looks like the Panzer Jaegers uh, in the in the building. That's where the volley comes from. MG34. Oh, here's the Dingo Barrage on this building here. And Aziligath, now that he he feels that his initial AT requirements are met with the Karo and the Panzer is finally getting his med truck out. Oh, here comes the Stewart looking for the flak balloon. First shot whiffs. Gets another one in. Panzer Jaeger's here to support. So the Stewart chunks down the flak balloon, forced to back up. Where's that six pounder? It's still, it's kind of static here in the middle. I'm actually kind of surprised that Azilia didn't move that flak filling. Caro Amato comes up to support against the Stewart. Now, the six pounder rotated over. Now, the strength of the burst is with the passive sprint, trying to put some VP pressure back on. A little bit of a push here in the center. Oh, the Bursillary retreat, but that squad that was trying to shoot the grenade was suppressed. Panzer Jaeger's soft retreat to the med half track. Black Filling takes another shot from the six pounder. The Stewart with a little bit of auto repair going on. Arrow is in close, but neither can quite see the other. You can kind of see the limits of their sight here. Be interested to see if Aziligath starts to rack up some of these upgrades. The rest of the area tangle with sappers here, but actually, honestly, these guys need to retreat. They're so low on health, you don't want to drop models for no reason. Now, Stuart, Dingo, basically, DePope relocating most of his forces here into the center. First thing they're going to find is an MG-34. Which does a fair amount of damage to the Dingo. The Stuart starts shooting at it, though, and is forced to back up. On, oh, another Karo hits the field, and now you see a Karo supported by a couple of Bursas on the flank here. But the six-pounder enough to force it away. Oh, this Pangeator squad almost goes down to the infantry sections. The second Karo shows up. And now these bursts is going to tangle with this sapper down here. Ooh, good mine. Sapper's forced away. Black filling in the second caro. Now Pact of Steel unlocked. So I think we're going to see more of these caros going forward. Oh, well, sapper's taking a lot of damage. The Karo's going to give chase here. Down to a single model. Maybe you can get a pickup. Stuart shows up. The Flak filling in serious danger of going down. The Karo's going to move up to try to support. But without the vehicle survival package, the Flak filling can't pop smoke. But the Stuart changes targets. 
So this, everything will get away here. And then in the center, MG-34 is pinned to this infantry uh, section. First is challenging here. You gotta watch out for a grenade. There's one. Oh, the grenade does a ton of damage. Now the Stuart rotating over helps that engagement, but it has to worry about getting pinned by Panzerjägers and Karos here. Panzerjäger is going to capture the center. Here we go. Two Karos. They found the six pounder. It's not set up. It looks like they think they can push it and try to knock it out. You got to be worried about infantry section snares, but the flak filling comes up. Really nice use of the suppression here. The Karos are going to back up and deal with the sapper squad instead. Oh my goodness. It's about to go down. Smoked by the Karos. Panzer Pioneers back up to repair uh, the damaged tanks. And DePope's going to react by getting another six pounder out. He still hasn't made a battle group selection. Repairs completed. He's floating enough fuel. He could easily get a Matilda. Or maybe a couple of Crusaders. Basically like upgun stewards to help deal with these Karos. First is now pushing this boy's AT section. Stewart comes back out fully he healed in support. Oh, a third M13 on the field. Honestly, maybe going Aussies at this point and getting a couple of two pounders with the, the higher fire rate might not be a bad idea against the Karos. They don't have as much armor as some of the other Axis tanks. In the center here, infantry section trying to advance gets pushed back. Stewart does a bunch of damage to his Bristolieri squad, but now three Karos on approach. First shot whiffs. Oh, but he, he takes the interior route back. Karos available to flank, and the Stewart looks like it's not going to get away. Infantry section tries to move up to snare, but gets suppressed by the MG34. Oh, but good snare, double shot from the uh, six pounder, so one Karo knocked out. And the Stuart's going to get away, so good engagement for DePope. Versus trying to push up, but they're just going to bleed to this Stuart and the Dingo. Now, the only upside for Aziligeth is he bought himself some breathing room. Right, he's able to capture up this VP, and now he's rotating, trying to use this flank here. Good flak frilling play to continue to suppress this infantry. Oh, no. One shot from the six pounder. Flak frilling does not get away in time. Maybe hold fire there might have kept it from being shot in the fog of war. But flak frilling knocked out by the six pounder. So things definitely starting to go to Pope's way here. And here comes the steward again, pushing up on this MD-34. The models are clumped up. It could lose quite a bit here. Azilagat sees the danger, and he's going to get a pack 38 out, but it's going to take a little bit of time. Versailleri tagging with an infantry section. And Azilagat down 320 to 170 on VPs, but he's, he has the triple cap back on. Good dodge of the grenade here by the Bursas. Caro in support. So they're going to start to drop some of these infantry sections, but now the rest of the infantry platoon arrives to support. Caro force back versus force back. So interesting, Azilagath has traded a couple of engagements for VP pressure. And he's floating a ton of these uh, command points as well. So this could be really useful to get him upgrades for his Bursalari, make him just deal a little bit more damage, last a little bit longer in combat. Panzer Gators come up, get a couple of shots off on the Stuart. Now a push here in the center, MG34 moving up, but the Dingo, or the Recce section actually going to drop artillery on it. On the flank you have two Karos trying to preserve the northern VP. They could chase this infantry section a little bit. 
And there we go. Zillagath heard what I was saying. So now he's uh, upgraded the bolster and the Bredas for the Bursalieri. Just to help them with a little bit of late game scaling here. Oh, infantry section on the flank of this MG34. Burst is here to support. But it looks like Pope's going to get a reprieve from the VP pressure. And now we have a tank coming out. And two Karos trying to put some pressure on this infantry section. A little bit of bleed and then they're going to back up. Squad here in the center, just hanging out behind green cover. Stuart doing some damage, but not really knocking down many models. Oh, one more shot though. <laughs> the shot goes straight into the hill. Now the Pack 38 takes a shot at the Stuart. Really lucky engagement for those bursts of the area. Heroes on the flank, bleeding this infantry section down here. A six pounder gets a shot off. And Azilagath now going to take the VP and the resource advantage here shortly. But with this Crusader on the field, the Pope potentially has some answers. Now it's still got the two pounder gun on it, but that gives it good damage against infantry. So no need to upgrade just yet. And here come the Karos. One six pounder reasonably close. He doesn't have to worry about snares. The Crusader going to back up supported here by the Stuart and six pounder Ooh, good shot from the six pounder as the caro drives past the uh the camp or the strategic point here but now we're with the triple cap on we're about to see vp parity the boys at rifles hop into this central garrison here but without the right windows unable to really engage the Karos, then they're going to back up. Zillagath floating a bunch of fuel. We may see tier 4 here shortly. And and Depope really unable to get off this triple cap. And now Zillagath going for the, uh, the LEIG. Which is uh, going to really help him with some of these infantry engagements. And the two six pounders in the back. He can micro it well. You know he can. Here's the Crusader. Wow, it shoots right into the ground in front of it. Bursalieri chipping away at the six pounder, and the Crusader just does no damage. I wonder if he did the. It's a Crusader 3. Okay. So that's the issue there. Is he upgraded it to the six pounder gun so it does a lot less damage to infantry he's clearly using it once it in an anti-vehicle roll rifle grenade hits the building bursalieri dodge and then hop right back in which honestly is a super tilting mechanic like good micro but man it's annoying how quickly units can get out of buildings when you uh throw a grenade and so depope's going to be able to get alleviate some of the vp pressure here now here comes the steward Second squad of Bursalieri rolling up. They're going to hop into the garrison, but they need to be careful. They can take a lot of damage on retreat from this Stuart. Nothing's really in position to help. Infantry section backs off. In the center, infantry section trying to get the, get the cap on. Actually, you know, it's going to go a Zillagath's way. He's going to be able to capture both flank VPs. And the center is uncaptured. So that brief reprieve, not going to, not going to be enough. Garo here to challenge the Stuart. Meanwhile, ooh, Crusader knocks out the other Karo supported by the six pounder. And this might be why Azilla gets floating a bunch of fuel. I think he's recognizing these Karo is not gonna scale against the later British armor. Oh, Panzerjägers catch the Stuart out of position. Nice flank, but the smoke, the Panzerjägers stop engaging so the Stuart will get away again. Here, Karo tangling with the Crusader with the six pound gun. To the Caro force back. And DePope doing a great job winning these engagements, but he's now under 100 points. Uh, victory points. And I think Azilagath sees it. He probably wants heavier armor, but it's easier for him to amass these Caros and just maintain VP pressure. So a tick rate of 3 per uh, three every 3 seconds. 
Uh, until Depot can start to decap, he's basically got a minute left in this game. Now we're down to two every three seconds, so he's taking some of the pressure away. LEIG Barrage coming in on that Southern VP. Good rifle grenade. But that MG3014 is still going to get away. Versus push back through the center, so uh, Depot won't be able to capture the center VP. Infantry sections clear the pack 38, but two Karo's still in the back. Panzer Pioneer is going to pick it up just for support against the Crusader and the Stuart. Here's the Stuart on the flank. The pack 38 refaces, chunks away at the Stuart. And it looks like Azilagath has made, or not Azilagath, the Pope has made his choice. He's going to focus on the center VP. Oh, no. Stuart knocked out by Pack 38. Takes a wonky path in front of the building. The Crusader here, just with the, the six pounder up gun, not doing any damage to these infantry at all. Once he gets the up gun, it's basically just kind of like a chappy. Sapper goes to try to cap the VP, but gets gunned down by the Bursas. Who are just ignoring the shots from this crusader. Hands you sit on center VP, and here we go, triple cap again. So about 30 seconds of life left on the clock for the Pope. He's got foot guards coming out. It looks like he's finally selected a battle group. So he's gotten uh, the Indian artillery, he's gone for the volunteer infantry, the, the manpower hack there, so to speak. Maybe Warcry instead of Valor might have been good. Uh, to increase movement speed and debuff enemy infantry in combat, but it looks like this is going to be it. He just doesn't have any uh, any chance to take off the VP pressure here. Yep. And so Azilagath takes this one. Okay, so as we review the build order here, starting with the Pope, uh, obviously goes two sappers into his section command post. Gets a dingo first, and then three infantry sections over time. Really uses the Dingo well. Uh, if you want to see what good Dingo play looks like, this is a good match for it. Uh, Tex Field Infirmary and Grenade Package. Um, then goes Platoon Command Post. The Grenade Package, he actually uses the Rifle Grenades uh, fairly consistently throughout the game. Normally, that's something you see when you're worried about light vehicles. You saw that he also upgraded the, the Boys AT rifles on one of his sections. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. He was very aggressive in getting AT out early. I think he was worried about... Uh, the AT rush coming. From there, he attacks Platoon Command Post, gets his first six pounder out, then unlocks the Stewarts uh, and gets a single Stewart. Um, it might have been good maybe to get a second. He had some fuel that he was floating for a while. The Stewart was really effective uh, in trying to buy himself some space. Good counter to the flak filling, good counter to the Bersalieri. Um, and in fact, the Crusader that he gets on later in the game just doesn't do as well as the Stewart as you would like. Uh, infantry training unlocked, uh, really important, especially when you're dealing with bursas. So it allows his infantry sections to scale just a little bit better against the bursillary. Gets some, I think, pretty close to vet one, if not to vet one itself, and then also provides a 10% bonus to accuracy and received accuracy. So uh, really helpful in infantry heavy fights and minimizing that manpower bleed. Gets his fourth infantry section. From there, gets a second AT gun, uh, and then he's really just managing the fight for a while. He eventually gets tier four. He builds a crusader, does the upgun to upgun to the crusader three. I think what he's looking for here is that mobile anti-tank because he's got the Karos pushing everywhere. And it's one thing when you have the six pounders uh, to let the Karos come to you and then try to get a couple salvos off. Having the crusader on the field gives you a little bit of that mobility. The problem is with the crusader in its current state, if you get it, the crusader three upgun, it does no damage to infantry. And so now his ability to bleed the bursts kind of goes away. That's why I debate if maybe a second Stuart might have been better or maybe leave it the Crusader 2 because the penetration is still good enough against the Karo. And then if you see Panzer 3s, Panzer 4s, Tiger on the field, then you can upgun at that point. Uh, it used to be a straight upgrade and, and now it's not. So we're, we're talking about. And then towards the end of the game, he gets the armored vehicle training. I like this. Uh, obviously, you want the game to go longer, more vehicles to come out to make good use of it. Um, but that investing into that veterancy and that experience is really helpful. Uh, on the battle group side, he doesn't choose the battle group until really late. And the choice is kind of interesting. And we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more later. Obviously, he goes through for the volunteer infantry, the, the manpower hack, right? The reduced reinforcement cost. So that'll help in the late game. 
Um, I think though, rather than doing uh, Valor, the Valor upgrade, uh, which essentially right, improves your infantry squad performance as they take casualties, you go for the War Cry because this allows for a sprint and it debuffs enemy infantry that you're in contact with. So if you're struggling for VPs and there's a lot of pressure on, using War Cry to help push these four infantry sections across the map. Um, it'll improve their performance against the Bursas. Now you just got to manage the vehicle threat, but that, that could have been useful in getting a couple of the VPs capped and helping him put some of the pressure back onto Azilla Gath in the late game. Uh, on the opposite side, he uses a bunch of artillery call-ins. The, the, uh, air burst barrage might've been useful late game at trying to knock out some team weapons. If he'd gotten the MG 34 and the pack 38 kind of in the same spot, but really not much from the battle group here. Uh, and we'll talk about it a little bit more in the post-match. Okay, and now for a Zilligat's build, right? Italian Combined Arms Battle Group, and you can see it uh, in the color here in the build order, right? So I use this orange color for all the call-ins, and a Zilligat uses the call-ins quite a bit. So Panzer Pioneers, Crowd Shits, and three Bersilieri as the start. A ton of mobility. You see him immediately go for the, the three VP cap. That's going to be his strategy throughout the whole game um, is just the VP pressure. From there, he texts uh, uh, Tier 2, he gets the MG34 out for a little bit of suppression, text the fire support elements, gets a flak for Ling, right? And so what he's trying to do here is use elements with suppression to pin his enemy and then use his, the speed of the Bersilieri to spread him out uh, and kind of own the capture, uh, the VP uh, victory here. Uh, Panzerjäger mechanized group. Um, he doesn't use them in the half track very much, but the Panzerjägers are, are a good soft counter to the Stuart, which comes out around the same time. Um, and then he goes for the Karo and he starts pushing a couple of these Karo Armados out. So one-on-one -on -one against a Stuart, maybe it's a little bit of an RNG engagement, but if you get two against a single Stuart, so now he can hold that vehicle at risk, right? And so anytime the Stuart shows up to try to counter the Bersilieri, the Karos can show up and, and put it under pressure. Uh, and so still here, he's got that numerical advantage and he can spread out uh, to Pope and kind of control the map or at least the vps which is his strategy he gets a med truck out it's a little late you saw some of the early infantry engagements uh go to pope's way because the bersilari were coming out at like half health um he had i mean it's not much of a time gap but you get a mechanized group out like the panzer one if you're not going to use the half track throw it in your base you can use the healing every now and then um gets a couple more caros out i think the most he ever has on the field is three gets a pack 38 um, just to provide him some like uh, stationary anti-tank. I think this is good. Just just the balance of it because of the range of the AT guns. Um, better chunk damage than the Karos. I think actually the Karos only do 80 damage per shot. So uh, the Pack 38 literally does twice as much damage. So now, now the Stuart has to manage that threat as well as the mobile threat from the Karos. Late game he gets the LEIG mechanized group. So the LEIG is never a bad idea, uh, especially if your opponent's using a lot of team weapons. So with the two six pounders, uh, it's a good thought. I wish he'd done more with the half tracks. Um, there's some utility kind of lost there, but you don't need him to move around uh, because the bursas are sprinting when they're out of combat. Um, so there's a possibility, maybe, you know, a mortar half track instead of the LEIG. Not as effective, but enough to put some pressure on the six pounders. Uh, he replaces one of his lost caros towards the end of the game and then is able to close it out basically just on vp pressure alone uh, from the battle group perspective the thing that's really notable about this is he focuses the right side of the battle group first right unlocks the sum event but doesn't use it but he unlocks the caro and then pact of steel to make subsequent italian uh light vehicles cheaper that's going to allow him to continue to mass into the late game by waiting on his bersilieri upgrades on the left side of the battle group it helps him get that Karo out around the same time the Stuart hits the field, right? So the Stuart's not as effective as it would be. There's not a power spike there, which is good when you talk about Dak countering the Brits. Uh, then on the left side, the Bersilieri upgrades. He gets these later, and, and it just makes sense, right? If your infantry are only Bersilieri, uh, leveraging the, the plus up, the squad bolster, and the Bredas, just help them scale better, hold their ground a little bit better against these uh, veteran British infantry with their weapon upgrades. Okay, so as we, we get into the post-match kind of review here, um, it's a good match, right? Both players really good. Uh, pretty back and forth. And I think what was interesting is you almost saw like two different strategies 
right? Uh, and so, so starting with Aziliath, right? It was super clear about 30 seconds in, his strategy was just to put VP pressure on as early as possible and win as quickly as possible, right? Which is ironic considering it took, you know, 27 minutes for the game to close out. Um, but it's focused on the win condition of the game. And I think this works sometimes because a lot of players, and like, I'm definitely guilty of this, like, I focus on winning the engagement. What army composition do I need to solve the tactical problem that is presented to me on the field? But at the end of the day, you win the game by making the other guy's VP ticker go away. So, um, so it's just kind of an interesting approach. And if you're slow to respond to it or unable to respond to it in time, you end up losing a game where like you feel like you outplayed the other guy. Um, it was interesting in this towards the end of the game, you could tell Aziligath is not afraid to throw away his units. Right, he wanted to have the effect. He wanted to buy space to own the VPs uh, and to force the Pope to kind of make his own sacrifices just to gain incremental um, like terrain, basically. And so you saw a couple of the Caros get knocked out or almost kind of thrown away, but it was fine because one, he knew he could backfill them, and then two, uh, he maintained that VP pressure. Um, the downside to this is this strategy doesn't really give you too many options if your opponent can weather that like mid game storm and start coming out with late game units. Uh, I think if this game had gone another five minutes and the Pope starts to get, uh, you know, Matilda or Grant out, then suddenly Aziligas on the back foot and now he has no counters and he has to uh, do a, a whole host of teching just to make his late game units viable. Um, other than that, though, I, I thought. There was good micro kind of across the board. You saw a couple of good grenade dodges. You saw a good counter to the central garrison. Um, the last piece here is you really didn't see any armory upgrades, right? So on one hand, there was some bleed from the Bersaglieri, right? Uh, not a super vehicle heavy approach until about midway through the game. So he didn't have a ton of spare manpower uh, to, make, to get those upgrades. And then next is because he only built tier two, you just don't have that third row of armory upgrades available to you. So no rapid advance, no emergency repair kits. Um, and that kind of hurts. I think the Karos, if you get them those two upgrades, then they really help you because now they can cap. Now they self repair. They get the plus 80 HP. Um, but that's a lot of teching to do to get there. He had the fuel, but we didn't have was the manpower. So uh, I think, yeah, again, if this game goes a little bit longer, Aziligath probably loses this. Uh, for DePope, Again, really solid play across the board and, and honestly better in terms of how he took engagements and fought tactically. Great use of the dingo. The fact that it got to vet three and was alive all game. Uh, the Stuart, he he did a really good job microing. He lost it late. I don't know if it was a little bit of like a misclick or the pathing being wonky, right? It crossed in front of the sight block instead of behind it. Um, never lost his two six pounders. Uh, so really good job across the board. Imposing costs on a skill of Gath. Preventing the DAC from getting all the armory upgrades. Um, one thing that I, I noticed, right? So he really he pushed into anti-vehicle stuff early, right? Early boys AT section, the grenade package. The first thing he built from his uh, tier two was the six pounder. And sometimes, it, I think I understand the impulse, right? You're worried about vehicles coming out. You're playing the DAC. It's a mechanized heavy faction. I do the same thing. The problem, though is when your opponent refuses to play into that strategy and now you've sunk 600 manpower into anti-vehicle weapons that are no longer useful on the battlefield. The boys AT section I think is at a good spot from a balance perspective. It's powerful against light vehicles but it takes away a lot of that section's anti-infantry firepower and so as the bursas scale they gain veterancy that section becomes a liability on the field unless you can get it into a position to deal damage to those DAC vehicles. And unlike the Panzer Jaegers, they can't camouflage and cover. So you're always going to see them be able to move around them. So uh, a little bit risky here. I understand the, the thought process, but I think that set him back a little bit. And then um, really what you saw overall, right, was he got outmaneuvered. Even though he's routinely winning engagements, getting good trades, he couldn't keep up with the speed of the DAC play. Like not just the vehicles, which you normally think about when you talk about fast play, but the Bersaglieri sprinting across the map. And then uh, Aziligath did a really good job of using suppression to essentially slow him down, to slow down De Pope even more, right? The MG34 and the Flak for Ling, every time De Pope started to push out or make a move, there was an MG or the Flak for Ling around 
to just stall that push a little bit to allow Azilagath to get his units into position. Um, mentioned it with the battle group, kind of how you could potentially approach the Indian artillery battle group a little differently. I think if he had made an earlier battle group choice, it might have helped. So a couple options here. If he'd gone armored, uh, Crusader AA, one or two of them uh, early to help bleed some of the Bursalieri, they're not really like, they're not going to win against the Caro, but they're also not going to take as much damage from the Caro uh, as like a Humber, right? It's, a, it's still a medium tank. So a couple of those might have helped, and then you always have withdraw and refit when they uh, when they're no longer useful. But that, they're fast; they do a lot of damage to infantry. The burst layer don't have a counter, so that's one option where he could have uh, kind of pushed back some of that pressure. Uh, the other thing I brought up during the game: maybe go the Australian Defense Battle Group, get the two pounders out. His six pounder play was great, right? Um, he smoked a couple of caros with six pounder support. Uh, but if you're worried about caro spam, the two pounders have a higher fire rate, wider arc, and they're still going to pen the caro just fine. So, um, a, you know, one six pounder in the back, a couple of two pounders on the flanks, and now you don't have to worry about the Italian vehicles as much. Um, you can have your infantry focus on trying to beat the Bursas and or go for like a Matilda that's maybe slow, but will you can just own a VP with it. Matilda supported by a two pounder and a six pounder, and you can sit on that one flank VP and then fight over the center. And then you're not under a triple cap. Honestly, though, I don't have tons of notes for him because I thought he played well. And like looking at this from a tactical perspective, I thought he generally won the game. Um, if it goes another five or ten minutes, like the game is just is just over. He had good fuel control. He could attack at grants. Like there are a million options available to him. So um, just a, a victim of falling behind the other guy's strategy and not having enough time to to fix it. Um, overall, right? So. I hit on a couple times. This is a great example of how to use the mobility of the DAC faction in 1v1 to kind of avoid the enemy's strengths, maintain pressure, and focus on the win condition, which is victory points. Um, it's also a really good example of how to work around kind of the center and force the opponent to constantly move their weapons back and forth, right? So uh, I struggle with this a little bit. Like Road to Tunis is a great example. There's that strong central garrison. Um, the Brits throw Vickers in there early, it can be tempting to kind of bash your head against the wall trying to clear them out, when in reality the better option might be to work around the flanks until and make that unit provide no benefit uh, to the other the other player. Um, and, and this Bursalieri strategy, like the Bursas aren't overwhelming, right? They're not riflemen, they don't scale the same way, but they're so fast. Um, and they're basically strong enough to make the difference in this game based on the strategy. If you think the game is going long, fewer Bursas and more Panzer Grenadiers, because they have better utility, they scale better, um, might be useful. So if you treat your Bursalieri kind of like an American player with scouts, keep them on the flanks, use them to cap and apply light pressure, and then uh, ball your combat power up in the center, that's another option or approach to this. Um, but as played right here, I mean, pretty effective, even for a 27-minute game, um, so so worth noting. What I will say, finally, um, you know, looking for DAC, ver DAC versus Brits, right, at the high level, DAC players beating British opponents. Um, in 1v1, it's a lot of bursas, right? I actually looked at three or four different replays, and what I got was a lot of bursaliary play. So I'm trying to highlight the really good play and the guys that use it well, but it's worth noting that that is probably the best approach, or at least appears to be the most meta approach uh, to DAC up against the Brits at this moment. If I find something better that doesn't involve Bersalieri, uh, then I'll definitely post it here. But that's all I got. I hope this was helpful. Uh, please, if you got other thoughts or comments, throw them down below, and we'll see you all in the next one.